Hey guys, so in this lecture, I'll explain you what is iData Error Info interface in WPF. Now, iData Error Info interface plays a very important role in reporting validations uh, in WPF when you are using MVVM pattern in particular. You can use iData Error Info interface without using MVVM pattern also, but to uh, avoid any sort of code behind logic we we use idata error info interface in wpf for uh, providing validations and for reporting errors onto the ui now as the name suggests this is very similar to i notify property change interface in wpf which reports the change notification onto the ui similarly idata error info reports the data errors onto the ui so let's quickly jump onto our slides and look what is iData error info interface in WPF. So validation is a very important aspect in every application. Now validation could be achieved in a number of ways, but to follow principles of MEVM pattern, WPF uses an interface by the name of iData error info. So these two points I have explained you already. Now this interface reports error without breaking the pattern. That is we avoid code behind logic. So if you are following MVVM pattern in your application, you need to implement I data error info for uh, reporting any sort of errors that occurs in your application. Otherwise you will be end up uh, writing a lot of code behind for reporting those errors on, on your applications. Now depending upon condition, we can fire error messages, tooltips, messages, etc. using this interface. Now this example we will see in our application what we have built in my previous lectures so let's jump on to visual studio now this is the same example what we have we have been following since last two or three lectures so this is a simple mvm practical so how it works uh, let's try to run this and you can see i have a very simple application in here it's it is following uh, mvm pattern and let me add someone here so it adds in here right so now say suppose I need to add some validation onto these text boxes. Say suppose uh, if if I leave this text box empty, I need to display a tooltip with the red color that uh, you need to enter something onto this text box and similar uh, similar for this text box also. So how we can achieve this? We can achieve this with the help of iData error info interface in WP. So let's implement iData error info interface and it is also present in the uh, namespace using system.component model. Let's try to uh, implement this interface now. You can see my interface is implemented and these are the two properties which are present in this interface. So let me mark this code for you, this code region for you. It's I data error info. Okay. And where it ends? It ends in yeah okay so whatever the changes this will be changes uh, this will be done inside this code block now you can see it has two properties one property is called as error and second property refers to the instance of this current class so my what is my current class my current class is person class so this property is referring to the object of this person class so it can access all the properties of the person class okay and it takes a parameter uh, string parameter column name so you can provide any parameter name in here so by default wpf provides it, uh, it says it column name so whatever validations uh, we need to provide we need to write inside this get block okay so the validation will be reported with this block and if there is any error it will be reported in with this block okay so whatever the custom errors you want to throw you can throw it with this uh, with the help of this property okay so uh, right now we don't need this thing we just need to provide the validation so let's return null so i don't want any custom error messages to be displayed so this uh, i am returning null through this property so i'm not using this property now okay I will be just using this property with the help of uh, this person class object okay so let me get rid of this thing here and all the validations uh, that needs to be done on to my ui needs to be implemented in here now to make it simple let me change this to property name 
okay so i will be supplying property name in inside my validation and then i will be checking the validation according to that property name okay so first let me define a string parameter string result equals let me assign it to null okay so i will do string dot empty now i will write a switch case in here okay so i will say property name so i will pass my property name in here and i will get rid of this default keyword from here i will write case and i will pass f name okay and then i will pass a validation for this f name so i will just write in here if a string is null or empty that is my text box is null or empty i will uh, write a message first name is required onto my result variable which i have defined in here okay a similar thing will be we will be doing it with the last name property so similarly i will copy this thing from here and paste in below here i just change it this to l name okay now i am checking the last name property i will say here last name is required okay and after this i will just return my result okay so whatever is the message first name is required which is stored in result or last name is required which is stored in result will be returned in here okay so we have implemented our interface i data error info now let's try to build this application so you can see the build has succeeded now let's go to our ui and let's try to implement this interface onto our ui so we need to bind something onto our ui uh, the same thing we did in our previous uh, lectures also we whatever we implemented in our model or view model we we bound it onto our ui so similarly i will define a style in here so i will say style and i will give the target type as text box okay then i will write uh, style dot triggers style dot triggers then i will write the triggers property so i will define trigger then i will give the property then i will say validation dot has error so this is a property which is present in trigger and the value will be true okay and then i will write this setup for my trigger so the now this setup will define the tool tip so i will write tool tip and the value will be so now remember uh, my trigger will fire on its self property that is trigger will uh, analyze itself that whether uh, this text box is empty or not right so then this trigger will fire on itself so i will write binding and whenever you need to write this type of conditions you need to use relative source okay well, uh, you need if you need to check that this control will fire on uh, some condition which changes on itself so i will write relative source I will type curly brace so x dot static so this is the way of defining relative source binding and since it's using itself so i will say relative source dot self okay and then we need to define the path for this relative source so i will say path equals validation dot errors dot current item so it will inspect the current item that is its text box text box and it will display the error content or the validation content okay and let me close this setter now so here it goes my setter has been defined so this setter is defined in here so what we are doing we, i am displaying a tooltip and the value of that tooltip is relative source that is i am binding that 
tool tip to itself uh, or you can say that I am binding the property the error property of that text box to that tool tip so I am using relative source dot self okay then I am defining the path and in that path I am taking that error content from that I to it of error info interface and on displaying it in here okay so this looks a bit complex but if you practice you will get hold to it okay and now let me correct this so now what we have to do uh, we need to display onto a text box so you can see that in my text box I have bound uh, my person dot f name property so I will just say in here validate on data errors equals true similar thing we need to do in my next text block text box so I have done this so these are three changes what we did we define a style we define a validate on data errors attribute onto our text box and onto our person class that is model I implemented I data error info interface and in that I data error info I defined these two properties so one of the properties which shows custom message I have written null because we are not using it um, and then in the next property I have defined my validation a very simple validation it says that if it's empty or null just fire this message okay and just fire this message let's try to run this application now and you can see my application is wired up okay so I have not entered anything so it's showing me error it says first name is required when I hover the mouse over the text first text box and when I hover the mouse on the next text box it says last name is required and you can see it's a nice validation red color okay so let me enter anything in here it says Virat and you can see my error has gone away from this text box now let me enter in Kohli you can see it's it works as expected okay so this is the role of idata error info interface so this uh, also remember that this idata error info interface is implemented onto the model you can implement it onto the view model also but it's very good practice to implement onto the model because the errors and exceptions will be caught onto the model itself okay so let's go back to our slides and you can see these all points I have covered onto our demo so this interface has two properties named error and one property which refers to the current object of class and we write our validation rules in here so on the next property the second property which refer to the current object of the class we defined our validations there okay so this I have al already shown in my demo so thank you so much guys for listening if you have any doubt please leave a comment and please do subscribe to my channel thank you so very much